I want to remind you that after this report came out, it was the Bush administration that determined that these 28 pages should be classified. And as Stephen said, we've read the report, and there's nothing about national security. Uh, I'm gonna let Senator Graham speak in detail about his concern about why this has not been released. <laughs> let me remind you that Senator Bob Graham spent 18 years in the Senate. He's a man that has the nation's respect for the type of person that he is. He and Senator Shelby released the joint inquiry report into 9-11 in December of 2002. Again, the report goes to the White House for final review. The White House at that time under George Bush decided that the 28 pages should be classified. The families have suffered long enough. The American people have been denied the truth long enough. It is time for the truth to come out. It is time for the truth to come out. As Stephen said, I want to thank Senator Bob Graham. He had a daughter who was sworn in to the United States House of Representatives yesterday, and congratulations on that, Senator. With that, a man who has driven this issue since 2002, I'm not even going to begin to tell you what he has done. From court action to other types of action, because he knows that the truth will set America free. So with that, I introduce the esteemed Senator from Florida, Bob Graham. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I too want to thank uh, Walter and Steve, Congressman Jones and Lynch for their leadership in bringing this matter to the attention of the Congress. Uh, I want to thank uh, the family members uh, who have been without question the most influential force in all of the changes that have occurred as a result of 9-11 uh, and will be the most uh, significant force uh, in terms of convincing the president that it is time to give the American people the truth. Uh, needless to say, uh, my remarks that I will spouse this morning are considerably different than they would have been but for events in Paris this morning, uh, which in my judgment bring this matter uh, into its proper focus. But first, a little background. Uh, after 9-11, it was clear that the Congress was going to be called upon uh, to conduct some form of an inquiry as to what happened. The decision by the leadership uh, was to combine the intelligence committees of the House and the Senate into a single body for the first time in the history of the Congress that that had occurred for purposes of carrying out this inquiry. Uh, the inquiry took uh, the year of 2002. Uh, it included uh, interviewing hundreds of witnesses, tens of thousands of pages of uh, documentation uh, leading up to an over 800 page report uh, which was submitted uh, in December of 2002. Some six months later, uh, the declassified version emerged uh, and we were shocked to see uh, that an important chapter uh, in the report had not been redacted. Uh, that is, as Congressman Lynch and Congressman Jones said, a, a word or a phrase here or there, but an entire chapter. Now, since that chapter continues to be classified, none of us can talk about it uh, in public. Uh, but I think it's fair to say that uh, it is a central uh, chapter uh, in terms of understanding uh, who was the support network that allowed 9-11 to occur. Uh, when we saw that this chapter had been eliminated, there was an immediate outcry. Uh, Senator Dick Shelby, Republican from Alabama, uh, who was, had been the chair and was at that time the uh, vice chair of the in Senate Intelligence Committee, and I 
uh, issued a statement to the effect that we were intimately familiar with that chapter. Uh, we considered it to have no uh, adverse effect on national security, that it was important uh, to the overall understanding uh, of 9-11, uh, and it should be released. We have subsequently been joined in that uh, by others who were involved, including the chairman of the House Committee, Porter Goss, who wishes that he could have been here today to participate as well. And subsequently, uh, the Citizen 9-11 Commission's two co-chairs, Lee Hamilton uh, and Tom Kane, have also advocated that these 28 pages uh, be released. Uh, the Shortly uh, after the declassification process ended, uh, a letter was prepared, signed by almost half of the membership of the United States Senate, bipartisan, including Senator Joe Biden of Delaware, Senator uh, John Kerry of Massachusetts, uh, and Senator uh, Clinton of New York, all calling upon President Bush to release the 28 pages. What uh, have been the consequences of this refusal to release the pages? Uh, and let me say, while the 28 pages are maybe the most important and the most prominent, they are by no means the only example of where information uh, that is important to understanding the full extent of 9-11 have also been withheld from the American people. So the comments I'm going to make are specifically about the 28 pages, but more generally about a pattern of cover-up that for 12 years has kept the American people from a full understanding of the most horrific attack uh, against the United States uh, in its history. The consequences in my judgment are three. One is a denial of the truth. A core question in 9-11 is did these 19 people act alone or did they have a network of support which facilitated their ability to carry out a very complex plot. No one who has looked closely at the facts, including the individuals that I just named, have come to a conclusion other than that it is highly improbable that the 19 people could have acted alone. Yet the official position of the United States government has been that they did act alone uh, and that there is no necessity uh, for uh, further uh, inquiry into the question of whether there was uh, a support network. We're now in the 150th anniversary of the American Civil War, uh, and we've had a national uh, history classroom over the past few years as incidents uh, that were consistent with a date in the current era coincided with a date uh, during that war. One of the pieces of information that we have learned, at least I have learned, uh, is that President Lincoln had a policy throughout the war that every message that came into the government, specifically into the State Department, was a matter of public record. On a daily basis, his feeling was that if the support of the American people were going to be maintained in a war which was in increasingly bloody, uh, many loss of lives and loss of treasure, that it took the confidence of the American people that their government was conducting itself in an appropriate manner and that the key to that confidence was disclosure. Uh, I wish we applied the Lincoln-esque standard uh, to what happened uh, in 9-11. The second issue uh, is the issue of justice. Uh, some 3,000 members of the families uh, who were lost on 9-11 uh, have been trying for years uh, to get justice uh, through our uh, system uh, for the losses that they have suffered. The position of the United States government has been to protect Saudi Arabia. At virtually every step of the judicial process, when the United States government was called upon to take a position, it has been a position adverse to the interest of United States citizens seeking justice uh, and protective of the government uh, which 
in my judgment, uh, was the most responsible for that network of support. Again, an example from the Civil War. Uh, the British had signed a, a neutrality uh, agreement with the United States that they would not be involved in the Civil War. It was found out subsequently that in fact their shipyards had been building uh, military vessels for the Confederacy. Uh, after the war ended, the United States didn't forget. It did, it did not uh, walk away from uh, the negative effects of Britain's perfidy. Rather, it pursued it and finally secured uh, a, re a recognition of what the British had done and some compensation for the consequences of their action. What a difference uh, between the way this country saw itself uh, as a proudful defender of justice for its citizens uh, and what we are experiencing today. The third consequence is the issue of national security. And frequently those who have defended non-disclosure uh, have said uh, this cannot be made available to the American people because uh, it will be adverse to our uh, national security. Uh, it will affect uh, methods and sources of information or other uh, information that is inappropriate to be made publicly known. Uh, as the two congressmen have just said, they both read the report, not 12 years ago as, as I participated in writing the report, but they've written, they have read it recently uh, and have both come to the same conclusion that we did a dozen years ago, that there is no threat to national security in disclosure. I'm going to make the case today that there's a threat to national security by non-disclosure, and we saw another chapter of that today in Paris. Here are some facts. The Saudis know what they did. They are not uh, persons uh, who are unaware of the consequences uh, of their government's actions. Second, the Saudis know that we know what they did. Somebody in the federal government has read this, these 28 pages. Someone in the federal government has read all the other documents that have uh, been covered up so far. And the Saudis know that. What would you think the Saudis' position would be if they knew what they had done, they knew what the United States knew what they had done, and they also observed that the United States had taken a position of either passivity or actual hostility to letting those facts uh, be known? What would the Saudi government do in that circumstance, which is precisely where they have been for more than a decade. Well, one, uh, they have continued, maybe accelerated uh, their support for the, one of the most extreme forms of Islam, Wahhabism, throughout the world, particularly uh, in the Middle East. And second, they have supported their religious fervor uh, with financial and other forms of support of the institutions which were going to carry out uh, those uh, extreme forms of Islam. And those institutions have included mosques, madrasas, and military. Uh, Al-Qaeda was a creature of Saudi Arabia. The regional groups such as Al-Shabaab uh, have been largely creatures uh, of uh, Saudi Arabia. And now ISIS uh, is the latest preacher. Uh, yes, I hope and I trust that the United States will crush ISIS. But if we think that is the definition of victory, we are being very naive. ISIS uh, is a consequence, not a cause. It is a consequence of the spread of extremism largely by Saudi Arabia uh, and if it is crushed, there will be another institution established, financed, supported uh, to carry on uh, the cause. So the consequences of our passivity uh, to Saudi Arabia uh, have been uh, that we have tolerated uh, this uh, succession of institutions, uh, violent, extreme, uh, uh, extremely 
uh, hurtful to the region of the Middle East and a threat to the world, as we saw this morning in Paris. So I conclude by saying this is a very important issue. It may seem stale to some, but it is as current as the headlines that we will read today. Uh, it is an, an issue that goes to the core of the United States contract with its people, that the people would give the government the credibility and support to govern. The government would give the people the information upon which they can make good judgments as to the appropriateness of governmental action. It's as fundamental as justice uh, to our the people who have uh, suffered uh, so uh, by this uh, uh, evil union uh, of extremism uh, and a very powerful uh, nation state. And it is the security of the people of the United States of America. So I again thank uh, the congressmen for their leadership. I hope that they will soon be joined uh, by uh, a uh, rising tide of other members of Congress who recognize the importance of this issue. And then finally, that the President of the United States uh, will declare uh, that he is going to adopt the Lincoln-esque uh, standard of full disclosure and let and rely on the intelligence and judgment uh, and patriotism of the American people to decide what the appropriate course of action should be. Thank you.